well known. What are the object, historical objections that are unresolved? The first historical objection is that the bending of light is, uh, is um, entirely of a Newtonian character to such an extent that, um, that uh, there is no need whatsoever of introducing curvature for the representation of the bending of light. So the argument is essentially the following, that Newtonian gravitation is universal, is admitted by everybody to be universal. Once you admit that Newtonian gravitation is universal, you must also admit that it attracts light. If for some reason uh, the, the light escapes Newtonian attraction, ladies and gentlemen, we have to rewrite four centuries of science since the, since the um, beginning with the, the, um, the historical script by Newton. Now, people say, oh, Dr. Santilli does not understand gravitation. That's what they normally do, because they don't have a technical argument, so they go into this step. So, and what they say is, is ludicrous, because they say, oh, but, but the, um, the Newtonian attraction is expressed in terms of masses, and, and, um, gravita and light has no mass. Since the light has no mass, they say, therefore, it's not attracted. But uh, does not uh, is not part of Newtonian attraction, and um, this type of um, this type of objection, when proffered by by expert, the uh, indication of a very equivocal posturing. Why? Because it is well known by expert to qualify as such that the origin of the gravitational field is the energy and not the mass. Indeed, there is no mass momentum tensor. It doesn't exist. What well, the tensor exists is the energy momentum tensor. And that is the source of the gra gravitational fields in any decent uh, level of treatment. So therefore, if, since uh, the energy is the origin of the gravitational field, is um, part of the mechanism of attraction, I have always written Newton's equation in their identical form, no change whatsoever, in which I write the energy instead of the masses and I, um, I rescale the, the gravitational constant. This is an identical reformulation. But then the representation of the bending of light is trivial because one of the two energies says, says the rest the energy of Jupiter and the other is the, um, is the energy of, uh, of a light beam, as you know, as everybody knows, is Akanyon, namely the, according to Einstein formula. So th this point is a very, this objection is very, very serious because uh, it goes at the very, very root of the conception of gravity as being characterized by an actual curvature of space because it's established that there is no need of an actual, uh, at least this is a very consistent treatment. It represents numerically the experimental evidence without curvature, actual curvature of space. As such, if we ignore it, ladies and gentlemen, we exit from, um, we exit from, uh, from uh, science and we enter into politics. I, I'm not claiming necessarily that this, uh, this argument is, uh, is correct. Maybe it has some flow on its own. That's not the point. The point is the suppression of, the, um, of, the, of debating this, uh, the, this historical objection. So I challenge my colleagues at Princeton University or at Cambridge USA or at Cambridge uh, England to, um, to, to, to debate whether this is correct or false. And I challenge them jointly with, um, jointly with the debate of other aspects that we'll, we'll see. If they do not want to debate, then I, I, I recommend them not to use uh, public funds from the American uh, taxpayer for personal theologies because that will be a violation of our law, will be abuse of public funds. It's just that simple. Now, let's see what happens with, um, uh, with, uh, with the representation, with, uh, with um, Einstein's representation of the curvature of space. Ladies and gentlemen, it is based on a chain of assumption. There are seven independent assumptions to achieve indeed, and then after seven assumptions, you do indeed achieve a representation of, uh, of the bending of light with the curvature. Yes, you do at the end. But the problem is that each and every one of those assumptions is debatable, as you will see in the, in the rest of the, this lecture. Let's start with the first assumption. Those are the basic equation of Einstein uh, gravitation. 
representing its very, very, the very essence of his conception of gravitation, namely the reduction of gravitation to pure curvature with no sources. Look at here on the right hand side, there is zero. And uh, now, immediately at this point, the equivocal physicist will say, oh, this is until he does not understand, does not know that you can put on the right hand side. You can, uh, there are also source term, uh, source tensor than the right hand side when the, the body is charged. Ladies and gentlemen, when that uh, objection is moved, it's equivocal. It's equivocal because Einstein was Einstein. This we are talking about, uh, the, for instance, the gravitational fields of the sun that has an enormous mass. The source term, uh, tensor on the right hand side is for the potential charge of the sun. Let's assume that the sun is indeed charged and we can measure. But then, ladies and gentlemen, the contribution of the charge to the gravitational field of the sun is 10 to the minus 40. It's 0 0.00040 before you see a contribution. Just mentioning that there are, there are in this argument that there are source terms due to the charge is corruption. Either it's total lack of any technical knowledge or it's corruption. This is what Einstein stated. The point, however, is that um, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this equations are irreconcilably, irreconcilably incompatible with the electric, electromagnetic origin of the mass, demanding a first order, not one or ten to the minus fourth, a first order source tensor on the right hand side, as we will see in part two. So the very basic assumption is fundamentally flawed and um, has not yet sur sur survived the test of time. But then you go to the, all the others. Then you have to select you know, a, 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 a metric. This is, um, you have a large variety. Look at this. <laughs> it's in, even in contradiction with, um, with the Schwarzschild metric. <laughs> it is just selected a lot among a large variety. And rather than this, I won't select another solution. And then, <laughs> and then with covariance, you have an infinite variety of, of, of line elements you can select. And then after that, you have, the, you have to select the geodesic. And then after that, you have to select this and this and that. After that, yes, indeed. After that, you represent curvature. But ladies and gentlemen, let's compare the, the, the power of the representation of the bending of light by Newton, Newtonian gravitation with this chain of assumption. There's no question in my mind that um, Newtonian representation is preferable because there, are no, there is no assumption whatsoever. Everything is based on first principle without, uh, without assumption. At this moment, the, the, question, the, the, the correct question is then, then why, do we have to, why do we have to use curvature when, uh, when, um, when uh, Newton represents indeed in, um, exactly the, the experimental evidence of the bending of light? Immediately, we'll say, oh, because there is the 45 seconds of the perihelion mercurium, mercurium and other things, ladies and gentlemen. But um, we, don't, we don't have to represent 45 seconds of, uh, of uh, uh, Pariel, we have to introduce all sorts of a chain of, uh, of uh, continuous assumption and counter assumption, each of which is debatable and actually has been disproved. And, uh, and in any case, the, 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 the 45 seconds of Pariel and other aspects have been um, represented by, by uh, the theories in a Minkowski space with an abyssal difference with the representation with Riemann, as we will see. Representation of those relativistic effects in, uh, in Minkowski space without curvature is invariant over time because it possesses the Poincare symmetry. This has no invariance, it's a covariance. So the numerical prediction of 45 seconds is only a Polaroid uh, picture, as we will see in a moment. In conclusion, the, I have to conclude, to the best of my knowledge, that uh, the nu Newtonian uh, gravitation is preferable to Einstein gravitational, to the best of my knowledge, at this first stage. But let's keep going. Another historical objection, also totally unaddressed, is that um, the curvature positively cannot allow the representation of a fundamental event in gravitation, which is the free fall. The free fall of an object along a straight, straight radial line. Here is the Tower of Pisa, Galileo went on the top, to, of course to, um, to, um, there was an historical test for, um, not for gravitation, but well, for the gravitational constant, but in any case, the, 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 the already since uh, Galileo, we can see the, 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 the straight character. 
there is no possibility, ladies and gentlemen, to, to represent this, uh, this event with, um, with the curved space, none. And uh, at this point, immediately they are, oh, but no, but we go into the geodesic, uh, geodesic, which is a radial line. Sure, but then, <laughs> of course you do, but then you have to kill the, you have to kill the curvature tensor. So you have to uh, annul the curvature, which is precisely the object. So um, this, this objection has to be matched with the preceding one that essentially established the, um, the uh, profound doubts on, uh, on the fact whether space is indeed actually, actually curved, in other words. It may, may be possible that the Riemannian uh, the geometry, due to its magnificent beauty, can indeed represent gravitation in a very uh, elegant way. But the point, the fundamental point, persists, is that it does not necessarily mean that the space is actually curved. Even though the representation is magnificent from a mathematical viewpoint, it does not mean that space is actually curved. Think in this way. Not only the bending of light, but the idea of a curvature is associated with the trajectory of planets around, uh, around, uh, around the sun. But th that associating this trajectory with the curvature, ladies and gentlemen, is fundamentally flawed on any grounds and serious scientific grounds. That's basically Newtonian trajectory <laughs> of um, the equilibrium between the gravitational attraction and the centrifugal force um, the centrifugal force due to rotation positively, absolutely without any curvature of space whatsoever. Let's go to the, the next um, objection, the third uh, uh, out of a number of uh, historical objections. I've selected only three. Namely, the fact that we have a weight. Look at me. I'm, I'm heavy. See, I'm attracted by the earth. And I feel this uh, weight without moving without moving. Now, what is the problem? So the, what is the historical objection? Einstein gravitation cannot represent the weight of stationary bodies. This is essentially the, the objection while Newtonian gravitation can. Ladies and gentlemen, I meditated on this for decades. I have to, be, uh, I have to agree with the historical objection. And I found no possibility, no possibility to represent this fundamental additional, third additional gravitational point with Einstein gravitation. Ah, again, it may well be that um, I, my, my knowledge is insufficient. It may well be that Einstein gravitation represents the phenomenon. Yes, this, this is not the, the issue at stake here. The issue which is at stake is the unaddressed, unresolved, which means a profound disease, profound ethical problem in the entire scientific community on gravitation for one, in one century with a river, with the abuse of a river of money from the US taxpayer and taxpayers from other countries. The conclusion is that uh, to the best of my knowledge in regards to those fundamental events I have to prefer New, uh, Newtonian gravitation to Einstein gravitation. At best, if there is need of correction, definitely I will prefer relativistic corrections, namely corrections or enlargement or formulation of gravity in the Minkowski space and not in the Riemannian space for a variety of technical reasons that you will see uh, throughout this lecture, most importantly, the lack of an invariance. Minkowski gives you Poincaré. The number that you pred pre predict are invariant over, um, under the time evolution. With uh, Riemann, you have covariance, which by, 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 by very definition, the numbers that you predict are not preserved in time. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 if I remain as being a physicist, I have to select the most plausible approach to the best of my knowledge and to the best of my capability. And that is abandoning the Riemannian formulation of gravity in favor of relativistic extension of the Newtonian gravitation. With understanding that Newtonian gravitation already represents the virtual entirety except for small cor relativistic corrections.